Nito Koken is an honorable samurai, a favorite of the lord of the Echizen Fukui domain, and a master of both the sword and the spear. In self-defense, he kills a number of fellow clan members who, in their jealousy, ganged up to kill him. So he is now on his way to his former home in Edo, fully accepting that his life is now forfeit. Futugo Rokube, the most cowardly samurai in the Echizen Fukui domain, unexpectedly volunteers to take on a mission of revenge against a superior, which no one else dares to accept. His target is Nito Koken. Rokube is not only a coward, but also lacks any ability with a sword and doesn't have any fighting skills to speak of. Ignoring his sister Kane's pleas not to go through with it, Rokube sets off on a journey to pursue Nito. Rokube manages to catch up to Nito, however, upon seeing him, he is stopped in his tracks, too afraid to challenge him. Rokube, in his fear-ridden state, inexplicably yells. <laughs> this has an effect that Rokube didn't expect. He finds that his yells have caused fellow travelers and locals to flee in fear and shun Nito from their establishments. Seeing this, Rokube gains a newfound confidence and develops his plan for defeating Nito. Now, wherever Nito goes, Rokube will tirelessly follow him, shouting Hitogarashi! whenever Nito attempts to rest or eat. Nito, being an honorable samurai, can only repeatedly challenge Rokube to a duel to the death. What unfolds is a battle of wills and wits. Murderer was released on Saturday, October 16th, 1976, as a double bill alongside a film called The Possessed. Information on the critical and commercial reception of Murderer is extremely limited, but Kinema Jumbo Magazine noted that the box office was sluggish for all Japanese films around the weeks of its initial release. I was not able to find any information on its budget, either in time or money, but it's safe to say that it was a low budget with a quick turnaround time. Murderer sold 11,800 tickets in week 1, followed by 8,900 in week 2, and 5,500 in week 3, for a total of 26,200 tickets sold. It should be noted that these numbers are from three areas, Shinjuku, Asakusa, and Ginza. It does seem the film was shown outside of these areas, but I could not find the numbers for this, and it remained in theaters until at least December 7th, giving it at least four weeks of unaccounted box office numbers. A ticket cost 900 yen at the time, or around $11 adjusted for inflation, which would put the recorded box office revenue at around $290,000, keeping in mind that this is split between two films. For some context, Japanese films have tiny budgets compared to the US. I really can't give an estimate of how much Murderer might have cost to make, but it was likely under $100,000. To give a comparison point, the big special effects film from 1994, Orochi, the Eight-Headed Dragon, had a budget of 30 million yen, or roughly $225,000 adjusted for inflation. Murderer was directed by Ozu Hitoshi, with this being the only feature film that he ever directed. He was also an assistant director on many films and had a strong career as a television director. Little is available about his life, and there are no known images of him available online. I managed to find an image of him in Kinema Jumpo Magazine issue number 690 in a brief section where he discusses making Murderer. He was born Ozu Sainen on May 15, 1928 in Kuga Town, Oshima District, Yamaguchi Prefecture, and died on April 11, 1991 from a heart attack at the age of 62. He graduated from Ryukoku University's Faculty of Literature in 1951 where he studied scenario writing. During this time, it seems he got the attention of the well-known director and writer, Daisuke Ito. On Ito's recommendation, he joined the director's department as an assistant director at the Daiei Kyoto Studio in 1955. Here, he mentored under directors such as Daisuke Ito, Kazuo Mori, and Kon Ichikawa. He is attributed to several assistant director credits on films from 1961 to 1971, all under the direction of Kazuo Mori. At some point during this time, he was promoted to Chief Assistant Director. He then moved on to Eizo Kyoto Studio in June 1969, where he mainly directed TV period dramas. This is where he directed Murderer, 
which won him the Best New Director Award at the 22nd Annual Kyoto Citizen Film Festival in 1976. Ozu Hitoshi's numerous television credits are worth taking a look at if you are at all interested in Japanese television series from the 70s and 80s, with notable works such as the television versions of Kogorashi Manjuro and Lone Wolf and Cup. Murderer was adapted from a short story by the beloved author Shugoro Yamamoto. Yamamoto's works were adapted for many films, television series, and stage plays, some notable film examples being Sanjuro, Redbeard, and Kill. Yamamoto's story of Murderer was adapted to a screenplay by Sutomu Nakamura, who, like Ozu Hitoshi, was also previously at the Daiei Kyoto studio. Murderer was produced by Nagata Productions, which was founded in 1976 by the legendary film producer Nagata Masaichi, as well as Eizo Kyoto Studio, which was established in 1971. Along with the latest iteration of Daiei, newly formed in 1974, Shochiku was also part of the production and handled the theatrical distribution. The cinematography was helmed by Chikashi Makira, primarily known for his work on a number of the Zatoichi and the Lone Wolf and Cub series of films. The music was composed by Chume Watanabe, whose work was prolific at over 100 credits to his name. Yoshinobu Nishioka was responsible for art direction and planning. He also has several well-known works under his belt. If you are enjoying the video so far, please leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment with what films you'd like to see me cover. <laughs> サムライにはサムライの誇りがあるぞ。貴様のような卑怯なやり方に加勢する者ばかりはいない。サムライだってあなたみたいにそう達人はおりませんよ。大抵は私みたいに臆病で血を見たり殺したりするのが嫌いな
1724 to 1749, which are the years he was in place as a daimyo of the Echizen Fukui domain before he died at the age of 34. As well as being in the Echizen Fukui domain, the main story takes place along the Hokoku Kaido route as the characters make their way to Edo. There were only two weeks from the time it was decided to adapt Shugoro Yamamoto's short story until the time that production began. During this two weeks, filming locations, props, and costumes were all selected. Much of the film is shot on location, with notable landmarks being Hikone Castle, Ninaji Temple, and the shore of Lake Biwa. Sets are used throughout, but they are not elaborate or heavily relied on. Uh. The original story of Murderer was first adapted to the screen in 1972 under the title of Bikuri Bushido, also known as The Witty Samurai, directed by Yoshitaru Nomura and starring two comedians, Kenichi Hagimoto and Jiro Sakagami. I was not able to track down this version to watch, but according to the film critic Toyoshi Oguro, writing for Kinema Jumpo magazine, the film was reliant on comedy and because of this overly comedic tone, failed to deliver the original story in a satisfying manner. However, this version of Murder works well because while it does have comedic tones, it delivers on the important aspects of the story, such as the ironic and satirical take it has on the Bushido Code and human psychology. I would say, and Toyoshi Oguro seems to agree, that this is in large part thanks to the excellent acting of the two leads in Murderer. Despite the character of Futoko Rokube being outside of his usual wheelhouse, Yusaku Matsuda nails being a coward, shaking at the mere thought of a growling dog. Tetsuro Tamba is fantastic as the stoic master samurai, frustratingly trying to deal with Futago's antics without dishonoring his blade. Ozui Toshi mentioned that Tamba and Matsuda were constantly exchanging ideas and images about their characters on set, eventually spreading to the crew and causing unexpected debate about the message of the story. I think that's evidence enough that they were both putting their all into this film. The two leads being top-notch actors certainly helps the film quite a bit, but the cinematography and art direction also stand out such as the scene in which Nito Koken is attacked by his subordinates, utilizing a gorgeous but minimalistic set with great use of fog, reducing the characters nearly to shadows, and it all comes together to make a stunning fight scene. Ozu Hitoshi's work in television clearly lent itself well to this film. It does have a feeling of being a made-for-TV movie, especially given the 4x3 aspect ratio when widescreen was already being widely used in Japanese cinema. The film also manages to not feel especially constricted by its likely low budget or strict production schedule, probably due to the story not requiring big set pieces or elaborate choreographed fight scenes. This was also aided by many of the crew being experienced in making period dramas in Kyoto where time and budget constraints were the norm. I haven't spoiled it in this video, but you can probably guess the overall outcome of this story. However, you are not likely to guess exactly how it comes to be. While Murderer is nowhere near the best that Japanese cinema has to offer, it has enough good about it that I would say it is well worth watching if you can track it down. Currently, it is only officially available via Japanese DVD or Japanese streaming services, and unofficially via SamuraiDVD.com with English subtitles. Hopefully someday it will be made more widely available outside of Japan. Hey everyone, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I know I have a lot of improvements to make, but please let me know what you think could be improved in the comments. Also let me know what movies you'd like to see me cover in the future, and please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. Go watch some Japanese films, and have a wonderful day.